Did you know that your FortiGate has the ability to do virtual servers? Do you even know what virtual servers means? Stay tuned and we'll find out. All right guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. Now obviously this video is about virtual servers on a FortiGate. Many of you may have no clue exactly what that is. I'm actually going to include a link to Fortinet documentation that goes into great detail, but this video is going to serve as a high level purpose of why you would want to use it and situations where it comes in handy. The best way that I know how to explain it is actually an oversimplification. If you want an environment that has high availability capabilities, chances are you're running FortiGates in HA. Why do you do that? Well, you run in active passive mode so you can perform maintenance on the backup unit without interrupting traffic. You may run active active mode because maybe your FortiGates are too small for a single device to be able to handle all the load, so you load balance it across the two. Much like that scenario on a FortiGate, you're actually able to use virtual servers via the FortiGate to execute similar behavior. Let me explain it in a little bit greater detail. A virtual server is basically a virtual IP that has a load balancing capability. Now, many of you may be asking, why would I need to load balance a virtual IP across multiple internal servers? And that's a very good question. The first thing you need to look at is this. Wouldn't you like to be able to perform maintenance on your servers without whatever function those servers is serving going completely down? For instance, DNS. Maybe you have a bunch of public facing DNS servers 10.0.0.1.2.3 and .4. All of them are serving DNS and they're all load balanced via your external IP thanks to a virtual server. Well now you're able to pull a device out of that virtual server pool, perform maintenance, patching, things of that nature, add it back to the pool and you don't lose any productivity for your production environment. Sounds like a win-win to me. Another scenario that's similar to the active active HA argument is what if you have multiple smaller boxes? Maybe they're just not strong enough to handle the entire load of whatever you're serving. You don't have the ability to put it in a VM environment and scale out the resources that way because you're limited on physical resources. Or maybe you're limited to where the number of vCores or RAM and things like that you can assign each virtual host if it is virtual. Well, in situations like that, you can load balance across multiple devices and they can share that load, which means you're still able to perform maintenance and you're not seeing a performance degradation thanks to having slower hardware or a situation where maybe the software just can't keep up. Those are the two most famous scenarios for using a virtual server on a FortiGate. Many situations are specifically, from my configuration standpoint, is the utilization of load balance DNS. For instance, big, big government agencies that utilize FortiGate and other FortiNet hardware actually use virtual servers to load balance their public facing DNS servers. And they're able to do maintenance without losing the service that those servers provide, which is a win-win. It makes maintenance windows significantly easier to handle and a lot lower stress. Another benefit of having a FortiGate handle the virtual server function is you're still able to offload SSL traffic if that's the function that you're actually load balancing, as well as you're still able to perform unified threat management across that resource or the resources that live behind the FortiGate. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to make a resource readily available and you don't necessarily have the ability to either let it handle the entire load or for peace of mind, you just want to be able to load balance so that you can perform the tasks you need to without causing any production traffic stoppages, virtual servers are the way to go. Configuring virtual servers is extremely easy. It's almost as easy as hitting the like button on this video or the subscribe button. Please comment below with the virtual server configurations that you use and why you use them. Good conversation goes a long ways, guys.